Well, hello there, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. It is me, the Pirate King, here again for another round of Pirate TV. Why? What, what is going on here? Oh, my goodness. Something is not... Let's see. Is that going to work now? Is my chat overlay going to work? Somebody type something. Okay, it works now. Anyways, thanks, Ducks. And thank you, Matt, for the host. I wanted to start this episode with a quote that I... Your booty is mine! Mimi, thank you for your host. Your booty is mine. Um, a quote that I've um, always enjoyed and always brought up a lot when discussing things that the government does... And the likes, um, because we're going to talk, what's up, Yossi's? Uh, we're going to talk about some stuff that's been going on. Um, we're going to talk about the fourth, fifth, and sixth amendments, and maybe sprinkle a little bit of the, uh, 14th amendment, um, because it's kind of linked to the fourth, fifth, and sixth amendments. Um, and we're going to just discuss that, that kind of stuff and what y'all guys, um, Y'all guys have to say, and I mean, it's 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 probably gonna be a pretty laid back stream. It's nothing super controversial, um, but the quote that I always like, it's always on the forefront of my mind, is uh, Benjamin Franklin, who said, "Those that are willing to give up liberty for the sake of security deserve neither." Um, and that quote really, really stuck to me after reading through some of the things of the, the Patriot Act um, that was enacted during George H. W. or George W. Bush's um, presidency while I was serving in the Army. And um, one of the reasons why it was, I'm still against it, have been against it, and will always be against it, is because it's too invasive and it gives the government too much power to ignore our constitutional rights as Americans um, this does not go for anybody that's outside of the United States because obviously you're not protected by our Constitution, even though I think y'all should be because, you know, our Constitution is pretty badass. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying it's perfect. I, it really, really isn't perfect, but it gives us a lot more freedoms than other people in other countries have. Um, I'm going to bring up an article from uh, BBC that was posted, I think, two days ago. Um, all right, hold on. Let me pull it up real fast. I have it already pulled up. I just need to fix this. There we go. So, if y'all don't know, the UK is slowly but surely going into a Orwellian future. Um... They have a CCTV system set up throughout most of their country where the police have access to all the CCTVs um, at any time. And they have, you know, there's, there, there's a person's job to sit there and watch CCTV. Uh, if you don't know what CCTV is, it's closed circuit t television. Um, basically, they have cameras in private stores, in public spaces, everywhere through, um, especially like London, big cities like that. Uh, where the police have access to those cameras at all times. Me personally, I'm against that kind of uh, oversight. I don't, I don't think it is an appropriate amount of security for the lack of privacy. Um, and I think privacy is something that a lot of us take for granted. But so we've we're we're growing up in a time we're we're in a time and age where. There's computer programs that are able to recognize somebody's face just based, based off of scanning it. Um, we use it on our cell phones to get into our cell phones. We use it to make Snapchat filters look better, on you know, make us look prettier on Snapchat and, and Instagram and the such. And even streamers use facial recognition software to use, you know, little cartoon characters to overlay them. It's good technology, but our governments are starting to use it for policing and security issues. 
personally, I have a big issue with this. Um, so the UK was running a or Metro PC, Metro PD in in the in London was running a test on their new facial recognition software um, in a very public area. Um, as you can see right here, this is what the story. I'm not going to play the clip. Well, I'll, I'll probably play the clip. So I don't know if they they show. Oh, there we go. Hold on. So this is from BBC. This was posted the other day. Um, and it's brought up a lot of questions because I'm not I'm not happy with it. And this gentleman right here didn't want to have his face taken up. He so he covered his face, and then the police pulled him off to the side, and then made him show his face, take pictures of him. What's your suspicion? Yeah, the, the fact that he walked past clearly. I would do the same. I would do the same. No, it doesn't. And then they gave him a ninety-pound fine. The chap told me down the road, he said he got facial recognition. So I walked past like that. It's a cold day as well. Because I've done that, the police officers asked me to come to him. So I've got me back up. I said, show me f***ed off, basically. I said, I don't want my face shown on, on, on anything. If I want to cover my face, I'll cover my face. It's not for them to tell me not to cover my face. Yes. I've got a man, £90 fine. There you go. Look at that. Ni thanks, Lex. £90. Well done. We ought to explore all technology to see how it can keep people safer, how it might right. make policing more effective. So basically this is them just telling you why they're doing this kind of thing. Um, me personally, I am ex completely, completely against this kind of use of facial recognition. Um, I think that it oversteps the bounds of our, our governments. Thankfully, um, in the states, hopefully, there. I mean, there's already cities and, and states that are outlawing this use. Um, it is, it, Jamie, it is a freaking supreme inv invasion of privacy. And if I was in there and I wanted, if I was walking by and I saw they were, you know, testing facial recognition, I'd cover my face too. You have no right to take pictures of me if I don't want it to happen. You know, even though we're in a public th place, yes, you can videotape me, but I also have a right to cover my face. Because it, you shouldn't have to hide. You, you shouldn't have to hide. It's okay. Th this is this is how I put it. Um, it's the same thing with people that are saying, you know, oh, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing. You have nothing to, to be afraid of when the U.S. government comes and says, okay, we're going to go through all of your stuff without a warrant because they can because of the freaking Patriot Act. Um, they could come in and they could set up, you know, malware in my computer right now to pay pay attention to what I'm doing be just because of. People that I follow on what's up, Math? Um, people I follow on Twitter, or people I follow on Facebook, or you know things I talk about on the internet. They they because of the Patriot Act, they don't need a warrant to put stuff into my computer. They don't have need a warrant to tap my phones. They don't need you know because of this act. And this is why one of the reasons I don't like the act is because I have privacy. What I do with my life until I commit a crime, you have no reason to come and look at me. No, it is. It, it is, Jamie. And I, I honestly, I, I fear for the people in the UK, honestly, because if this is the way they're going over there, you know, they're going to start fining you for trying to cover your face and for disassembling the GPS in your car. It, it's, it's not the government's right to track its citizens. Yeah, I know, Matt. Um, and that's one of the things, and it's something I've joked about for years, um, I joked about for years because I because I am a military veteran. Um, there was a memo dro uh, dropped by um, Napolitano, who is the the secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, to law enforcement agencies all across the United States. Oh yeah, I need to do that right now. Thank you for reminding me again. Um, there was a memo sent to all the police stations and all the police forces in the entire country from Janet Napolitano. Um, that said that. Foxy, I love you. You're the bomb. 
um, that basically said that anybody that was a veteran of the United States Armed Forces was a risk of becoming a right-wing terrorist. And that this is this is what the actual memo said. Um, so I, I used to joke that the NSA was freaking tracking everywhere I went because I'm a veteran and because I have, you know, more libertarian views on life and everything. Uh, hold on, let me see this. Mimi, please. I thought I could. Yes, exactly, Jamie. Um, I've always been... Uh, and what is what is to keep... Okay, this is another problem I have with it. Because same thing with fingerprints. Um, with, same thing with fingerprints. <laughs> How dare you swear? No, I'm just saying... Um, facial recognition does markers in your face. That's how it figures out your face. It uses different points in your face. But it's not 100% foolproof. It, it really isn't. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Mimi. You're amazing, and I love you. And Foxy. Yes, it was Jingles, and it was reinforced by Obama. Obama made it even stronger and more strict, and that's another thing that bothers me more, is that everybody forgets about this act that lets the government invade your privacy. Um, it should be Let's see make sure that works all right there we go um <laughs> uh jamie i mean it's it's seriously crazy like and that's one of the things that i was i was joking about with one of my friends the other day was that the that the uk is turning into in 1984 over there it really is let me edit something in here. Um, there we go. Sorry, I'm fixing something that I messed up. Your booty is mine! Think of the host, Jimmy. Your booty is mine. Yeah, remember me? Right. Yeah, and see, that's another thing, Math, is is that it doesn't... It doesn't... Then that that would be some another issue, is you're just going to make... Or like. Most criminals wear masks anyways, because they're, especially in the UK, because, like I said, CCTV is everywhere over there, and the police have access to CCTV all, all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, Foxy. I know, Jamie. <laughs> but, okay, so this is my question. I know with, with businesses and in public spaces, the CCTV is hooked up to the, to a local hub. For the police force. Are private houses hooked up as well? And, and another like it's it just cracks me up. Like it doesn't crack me up. It's it scares me. Because it scares me that we could be as in the United States we would we could be willing to give up those same rights. Oh, they don't have to by law. Okay. But a lot of them do. Yeah, but I see, that's another thing is, do you really want the government to look in your house at all times? I wouldn't. Jeez, I'm glad that my, like, my one camera in my room... <laughs> formal. I mean, my one camera in my room is kind of like, all you see is green screen in my chair at all times, unless you're looking at me. <laughs> the self-install Comcast. I mean, we do. We we're in in our current technological state right now. It would take nothing for a somebody from the NSA, somebody from the FBI, to you know 
get into our computers, get into our um, cameras and, and videotape stuff. Oh, wow. That's crazy. See, and that's another, th like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't know what I would do if I was in that situation. If somebody broke in my house, I'm going to defend my house. By any means. It's my house. It's my property. But, like, this, we're... I, I know the U.S. government's already using facial recognition software. I know they are. They won't tell us. They, they won't say anything about it. Because they don't want people like me to make a big huff about it. Um, because I would. I would freaking bitch, moan, and complain. I, there, there's a reason why our Bill of Rights are set up the way they are. See, and that's that to me is stupid, Jamie. You basically have to roll roll over and let them do whatever they want. That, that's well. I know you have cheese. I know. I know it's. I know the software's already there. They already have all the back doors into into our stuff. And good for them. <laughs> like, honestly, I didn't hear about that. Um, if you want to send me a link, I'll, I'll, I'd love to look at that. Um, or actually, I can Google that. One billion dollars. Wow. Wow. Real perpetrator used a stolen ID that had his name. Yeah, see? And that's all it takes. Because I don't know if I do. I can actually look at that right now. Um, let me check. Users. Waddlebeard. Hmm. I don't know how to set that up. I'll have to look through it and see if I can. Is there? What did I mess up? I see. <laughs> I'll fix that. Um, I was just trying to stay on topic. Oh, yeah. And so does Facebook. And so does... I mean, Facebook, you know they do. I mean, that's how they get you to tag all of your friends. Oh, yeah. They really are. That's This is crazy. Did Is he... The story's been updated with response from an Apple spokesperson. Bullshit, they don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like facial recognition being the end all. But you know, literally, you don't even have to sign up for Facebook. You, you don't. They have shadow profiles. So even if you've never signed up with a, a Facebook, they know who you are. Well, yeah, of course, formal, and that's and that's part of my problem is that if if we start relying so much on facial recognition on, you know, fingerprints on, you know, the different kinds of softwares that we're starting to use for our, our security on our phones, you know, that's why, like, if, when I did use, like, the, uh, the, what is it, the Iris one, um, for a, a moment, I made it to where you have to blink, but, I mean, that can also be routed around, too, so, I mean, it's not that, that horrible. You see, but see, that that's another problem I have is that your friends, like, if you've never, if you've never signed up for Facebook, you didn't ever allow them to make a profile for you. But they still do because they, they link you to all of your friends through s cell phone numbers and stuff like that. 
Um, yeah, they would still find a way. Like they, they just do. Um, so the reason why I bring up this story is because of the wonderful, wonderful um, Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendments. Um, the Fourth Amendment gives us the right to not be illegally searched or have anything of ours seized. Sometimes this gets passed around based off of, uh, you know, in the moment of a crime, such as a, a traffic stop or something like that, they kind of get away with it. Um, but they need to have probable cause, and they, and in most cases, when they come into your house, they need to have a warrant. And I, I, anybody, like, even if you're, if you're a law-abiding citizen, never let a police officer in your house. Unless they're, they have a warrant. That, or they're a family friend, a family member or friend. Yeah, po probable cause and suspicion. But, honestly, like, okay, here's the thing. Um, so, a buddy of mine, um, from back in the day... He, um, this is before a lot of states started legalizing marijuana. Um, he had, it, it, it's, it's really weird, you, because they can, they can stop, they can legally stop you in traffic, um, for breaking the law. Um, and then they can come and they, they make the decision on whether they want to detain you or not. And once you're detained, they, I mean, to be detained, they have to have probable cause to search your vehicle. They have to have your permission Unless they unless they have a warrant, it's 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 a really interesting situation. Um, they think they smell alcohol. They think they smell marijuana. Um, that gives them probable cause, but at the same time, you still could say no. I don't want you to check my vehicle unless you know you commit a crime right in front of them. Then then they can detain you and use their their they use their right to search your vehicle after that. Um, so I had a buddy of mine who he, he used marijuana on a, on a constant basis. Um, and a police officer was going door to door to find somebody, um, that they said was breaking into houses. Well, when my friend opened up the door, like the officer couldn't see anything, but he invited the officer in, not realizing by letting the officer in, and that there was stuff in plain sight, like a uh, a bong, that the officer then had probable cause to search the rest of the house because it was in plain sight. That's why I tell any of my friends, like I I am a big stickler about not letting police officers in your house unless I mean even if you're not doing anything, just don't let them in your house unless they have a warrant. I, I've talked to plenty of police officers on my front step. Well, yes, formal, but he, the officer wouldn't have known he was breaking the law unless he, until he saw that item. I mean, like, that that's, you're, I'm not saying that breaking the law is good and that you should do it, you know, you should break the law as long as you don't get caught. I'm saying that being a former military police um, officer never I don't make the police officer's job any easier than it needs to be. Yeah. Um I don't I like my brother. My brother was um my brother was a our so he was working for a company and there was a bunch of people at this company that were stealing stuff and he was part of it. Um the company asked him if he knew anything about it and he said no. Um, my mother, being the wonderful law-abiding citizen that she is, took a bunch of stuff and returned it to the, the store he was working at um, because they said that if he confessed that they wouldn't press charges. Well, they after my mom convinced him to, to confess, which I told him not to, don't confess, don't make it any, don't make their job any easier than it needs to be because they're just going to call the cops and he's going to get a record. Um, not, I'm not saying that I'm defending his actions because it was still wrong, but I just, I, I've never been a fan of giving the police officers, it's their job to prove that you did something. Yep. Well, okay. 
whisper. That's a different situation. Um, I made that okay. So, a, the whisper reminded me of a time that I got pulled over in the vehicle with her, and I put the I put my hands on my head. Um, this is a thing I do for for a lot of traffic stops when I get pulled over. Um, again, being a former police, being a former military police officer, I that you kind of know what's going on through through another officer's mind. Um, so when they're approaching a vehicle, because traffic stops are one of the most dangerous um, things for a police officer, they really are. Um, so what I did was I I turned my car off and then I pulled out my wallet. I pulled out or found my my proof of insurance and then I just sat there in the car like this. It was dark at night as well, so I just sat there like this, and I waited for the officer. I rolled down my window a bit, um, and then waited for the officer to come up, and he, he came to talk to me, and um, I explained to her the, 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 the reason why I did that was because it gives that officer a peace of mind that I'm not fumbling around for a firearm or a weapon or anything like that, so it makes his job a little bit easier, but at the same time, it keeps him from getting a, an itchy trigger finger. And I'm not saying that because I think that police officer is going to come and shoot me, but it just, it gives him that peace of mind. And I just, there's nothing I have to, you know, I'm not trying to hide anything. And even if I it was hiding something and I was like this, it just gives that police officer a little bit more peace of mind while he's walking up to the, uh, approaching the vehicle. Because like I said, that's one of the most dangerous things is a traffic stop. You don't know what people have in their vehicles and you're coming up to the, the, the car. Um, but if you would have asked, Hey, can I search your vehicle? I would say no. I didn't have anything in my vehicle, but I would still say no. Why? I don't want him, you know, I, he has no right to come and ins inspect my vehicle without a warrant or without my permission. Uh, see, but math, like, uh, on the, on the steering wheel is fine as well. But the problem is when you, you have to think about it when you're coming from the back of a vehicle. When you're coming from the back of the vehicle and you see somebody like this, all all you're going to see is shoulders. You're not going to see where their hands are. You're not going to see um, if they're fumbling with something in, in their lap or something. All you see is shoulders and the back of the, the seat. So that's one of the reasons why I put my hands over my head. So they know exactly where my hands are the whole time. Um, and it's it's not, it's just something I do out of, politeness i guess um i just i i as much as i respect police officers and i respect the job that they do and the um that issue of it i just i i don't agree i don't agree with confessing for everything i don't there's plenty of people that are out there that game the system and get out of out of committing even worse crimes than, you know, anything that I've done in my life. So I don't want to make that. That's the officer's job. Yeah. It's the officer's job to, to prove that I did something wrong. And in that sense of that traffic stop, I did do something wrong. I was driving without my headlights on and I didn't know I was driving without my headlights on because it was foggy and the lights made the street bright. <laughs> <coughs> It happens. But, you know, in that... <laughs> right? Um, in that sense, though, like, because of the way that I, you know... I feel the way that I approach that situation of making the officer feel more secure and coming up to talk to me and then having a civil discourse with him um, through my window that was not all the way down, um, it gave... It let him understand that I understood, I you know... That I'm not trying to be combative, A, and B, um, it got me out with a warning, a verbal warning. It wasn't even a, a ticketed warning. So that, you know, kept me out of trouble too. I think, I think we, I'm kind of getting off track, but at, for me, it's just, that's one thing about the, the, then this is the fourth amendment, as you can see right here above my head. You know, it's it's the right of the people to be secure in their person's house, papers, and effects. Like, everything you do, whether you're at home, at work, in your car, everything about you should be allowed to be held private unless they have a warrant. 
And I think that's one of the things that bothers me about the the facial recognition the most is that they don't need a warrant for that. They can just automatically run it, figure out where you're at, anywhere, you know, anytime you're at, and then they can they can track you. And I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but I don't like the government knowing what I'm doing, where I'm at, and and, and you know what I have with me. I just it's just something I've always been been against. I should never be afraid of the government. The government should be afraid of me. And this, then that's and that's how our government has been ran for t- over two hundred years. The government shouldn't should be more afraid of its own people than it should be terrorizing its own people. Not saying that either. Like I'm not saying that I'm going to go out and you know start a, a war against my country. But yeah, exactly for the people by the people, not you know the people serve the government. <clears throat> And, you know, I, I like, I just don't understand, like, how, how most people, how, how people in the UK aren't making more of a fit of the way that their, their government is invading their privacy. Don't, don't, I, if they ever try to pull a freaking minority report of, you know, pre-crime arrest, nope, sorry. I'm against that, too. You can't judge people, you can't... Oh, Partially, I, I have a problem with the way that the uh, minority report, you know, makes it that uh, that time is a static line, and it's something that I've I've had a big problem with. Um, but the yeah, retinal scanners and, and all the stores and Dorval, yeah, I don't know, I'm not for that. I don't want, I don't, I want to feel like I'm secure from. I want I, w- I want to be more secure in my own personal privacy. I don't need the government telling me what I should be doing. I mean, that, that's just next thing they're gonna want to put freaking you know cameras in my bedroom. And I already have one. <laughs> that's for my private use. Damn it. Oh. I do, but it's you know it's my personal camera. And you'd never see anything with my pot. <laughs> no, I'm just... I'm talking about my, my camera that I use for, for streaming. Uh, this is my bedroom. This is from my bedroom. I'm not in an office. I wish. I wish I had an office. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Look. Look, ducks. We were talking about cameras earlier. That's, that's the next camera I'm buying. It's a little GoPro. And I think I think we take for granted the the Fourth Amendment a lot, and I think that we as the people need to understand our rights. Hey, look, like I said, that's my private life. I mean, nobody needs to, you know. The only people that need to be involved in that is me and whatever consenting adults I have with me. <laughs> And this is this is why I'm a you know this, this is why I'm a libertarian. I don't you know I, if if I'm not hurting anybody, you have no reason to worry about what the hell I'm doing. That goes for the government. That goes for my mom. I know. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sure, you're gonna watch this later and be like, "Oh, Joseph, you're so. Why are you like this?" <laughs> yeah, my mom watches this. I know. I know. I'm I'm very, I'm very well aware of it. Um, I know she does. I, I'm, I, I know she does. And the government will tell you they want the best for you too. They just want the best for you. They want to keep you safe and secure. <clears throat> no, like I, <laughs> spreading knowledge, right? They don't want me around. Um. So the the Fifth Amendment is is pretty interesting because it it makes it to where um, the, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a pres- presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces, or in the militia, when in actual service in time of war or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice so the double jeopardy. Um, 
nor shall be compelled in any crim criminal play case to be witness against themselves, nor to, to be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. This goes back to the statement I made a couple weeks ago. Um, nor shall private property be taken for public use without co just compensation. Spreading lies. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, it's funny because this gets used in um, criminal court shows and movies all the time. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Um, and it, it makes me laugh um, that it gets used so much. But it's definitely something that, you know, gets used in courts. That you can, you know, use the Fifth Amendment to protect yourself from being a witness against yourself. Um, it also makes it to where you can't be uh, you can't be charged with a felony without going being indicted by a grand jury, um, unless you're in the military. Um, and then this is one of the things that bothered me about the uh, the Patriot Act about the uh, no fly list. Um, this is one of the things that bothers me about a lot of people who are saying that if you are on the no-fly list, you shouldn't be able to purchase firearms because there is no due process in this. Um, with the current Patriot Act, you can be a uh, you can be arrested for a terrorist threats or or the likes um, without any proof, without any. <clears throat> With it, without any grand jury, without any actual warrants, they can just come in, arrest you, and hold you indefinitely. And that leads also to the Sixth Amendment. So they can literally hold you. They, they've suspended habeas corpus, which is the the this part of the uh, the Constitution covers <clears throat> um, through the Patriot Act. So if they think that you're a threat to national security. They can just arrest you. They can go. They can tap your stuff. Um, you know, violate the Fourth Amendment. They can violate the Fifth Amendment, and they can violate the Sixth Amendment, all because of national security. Um, they also can <clears throat> take away your, you know, the deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So, one of the things that bothers me about the no fly list, about the the calls to put people on the no-fly list, also on a no-gun-buy list, is because there's no way to get yourself off. Um, once you are on the no-fly list, A, you're not told. You're, you're, not le you're not told that you're um, being, that you're on the no-fly list. You're not told that um, what evidence the, the state holds against you. You're not, it, that nothing is told to you. You just, one day you show up to go take a flight somewhere and they're like, Sorry, we can't sell you this ticket because you're on the no-fly list. There's no appeal process. That you're not. You never sit in front of a court to to plead your case. Nothing. You're just automatically on this list, and it is almost impossible to get off of it. I have I have not heard of anybody ever getting off the the no-fly list. Not to say that there hasn't been, but. This is a direct violation of the Fifth Amendment, and it's something that I, that was implemented during the with the Patriot Act um, that came through um, came across Bush's desk, and then further implemented or further you know added more to it during um, Obama's administration. And you don't have to like either of them. You don't have to you know like just one and not like the other one. Just know that. Both of them are responsible for keeping this act going. Um, and I've been a, I've been a big, big... I've been always vocal about that. I don't like the Patriot Act. I think it needs to be gotten rid of. But the problem with government is that once you give them the power, it's hard, it, they never give it back. Um, and the Sixth Amendment is basically just... In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall be or shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and informed by the, of the nature and cause of accusation, to be confronted by the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have an assistance of counsel for his defense. So 
one of the things um, I've been I've been seeing a lot lately has been, um, and this is one of the things I have a problem with with like social media. Um, when something happens and then it's instantly put on social media and then it's in- instantly dispersed, um, the court of a public opinion is so quick to judge everybody instantly. Um, this goes for anything, I, honestly, like from some celebrity that's being uh, accused of beating their spouse. Yeah, it is very reactive. Um, to somebody who, you know, has been accused of stealing from, you know, their company. And and so with social media and the way that it's it's ran right now is that everybody just gets all this information out, so they make their own judgment and then they react to it and most of the time they react to it poorly because they do, they work off feelings because most people work off feelings. That's what we what drives us. Um and I, and then people like myself who are like, okay, I'm on, I'm in the wait and see. I want to see the evidence against this person. I, I would rather, I would rather, you know, make a judgment based off of evidence than make an instant judgment based off of feelings. I, I've been guilty of it. Believe me, I've been really guilty of it in the past. Um, I know there was a. There was a professional athlete that, that, no, it is, it's human nature, but at the same time, it's kind of like, we have to take the step back. We have to, we have to make, you know, there's a reason why our court system, no matter how much you hate it, I, I find a lot of the problems with the court system, um, and the abuses of the court system to be outrageous, but there's a reason why it's set up that way because it's supposed to be more part uh, impartial. Yes, you, and that's that's one of the things. I, I'm and you're innocent until proven guilty. Until you, I can prove, until the evidence proves that you're guilty of a crime, then I can't say that you're, you know, you're a, a criminal. Um, I I don't I not for taking away somebody's rights and taking away their livelihood, um without seeing the the full evidence or whatever I, that can be allotted to me you know as a normal joe schmo on the street because i'm not you know in the court i'm not a, a lawyer i'm not a uh defendant but we should also you know the 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 sixth amendment also makes it to where you have your right to confront the witness accusing you of of whatever crime um and this is one of the things that hurts a lot of cases um it has a tendency of when a witness when the witness to a crime who's accusing this uh, accusing a person of a crime is fearful for their life they or they are going through trauma of the the act they have a tendency of not wanting to to bear witness to the crime um and this this can really hurt a prosecution uh, a prosecution's case because that you know because you have the right to to face your the the accuser then that's just our basic human right given to us by the sixth amendment um and it sucks because it, it has allowed people that have committed horrible crimes to get out free um if there's not enough there's not enough other evidence to go against that person um and then we also have the right to to counsel we have the, that's why we have so many public defenders my problem with public defenders is that so many of them are overworked underpaid that they're not willing to expel effort to actually fight for you um so we're stuck you know if if, if somebody who can't afford to pay for their own lawyer uh, they're stuck go you know using a public a public attorney um who's got a hundred different other cases yeah just for that day you know they have a hundred different cases that they're working on just for that day and you're just you know this is case number whatever all right okay take the plea you know and that's why we have so many plea bargains as well in, in our court system um that plus you know nobody wants to sit in court for freaking years.
for you know six months to a year trying to fight a case, you know, lose their job because they're not showing up for work because they're too busy, you know, defending themselves. Um, and that those are some of the problems I do have with the court system. But yeah, how do you fix that? You hire more public defenders and hope that you know you can get everything covered. And like nobody, no, any honestly, law, most lawyers who go through law school and go through the amount of money for law school, they don't want to be a public defender. <laughs> They really don't. There's no there's no money in that. And then you're overworking yourself and you know, you're just it's it's not an appealing job. Um it's just it it's interesting how much we as 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 people of this country are willing to to sacrifice because we think that the government can keep, can protect us better than we can ourselves. And they can, but at the same time, you have to give up something for that protection. You know, um, there was a time in, in U S history where the United States didn't have a standing military. They didn't have a standing army. They didn't have a standing Navy. Anybody that was in the actual defense of the country were militiamen who were volunteers. Um, this is after uh, the Revolutionary War, because during the Revolutionary War, most of the people in it were militia, but then they did create the United States Army um, and the United States Navy and had government-funded troops for it. Um, even though that in itself caused a riot, um, because they didn't get paid after the war was over. Um... But there was uh, there was a time frame in our country where we didn't have a, a military, and it's kind of what the founding fathers wanted. They didn't want to have a standing military. They didn't want to have um, because it the reason for the Third Amendment was abused by the the British government um, when they were in the colonies. They were make, they were forcing civilians to house and feed and keep British soldiers on their property. Like you can volunteer your, your house to soldiers. Like that that would be no problem, but the government can't say, Okay, now we're gonna we're just gonna come and live in your house for, you know, the next year. It, it, so the United States, when they first created, they want they didn't want a standing army. They didn't want any kind of abuse of that. They just wanted the people to defend themselves um, through militias. And then there was a group of people that did want us to do standing military. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to think if, if I'm getting this right. Um, I'm pretty sure the War of 1812 was what sparked them to have a standing army. If I'm not mistaken. It's either that or the uh the pirates um in Africa. The Barbary pirates. I can't I can't remember if it was either the Barbary pirates or the eighteen uh, War of 1812 that caused the United States military to have a standing military or the United States government to start a standing military to protect the the country and it's um properties and such and it, it's so the, you know then you had to go and sacrifice money and installations for the standing military you had to you know build ships for them you have to supply them with weapons and with all this stuff so that that was a financial burden for a a budding new country uh that they could not afford um i mean they there was not much money coming in and out of this country at that time. Um, but back to what I was talking about with this. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember what else I wanted to talk about with these things. Because it, it just, it makes me, I don't know. I It, it all leads back to this, this whole article and the fact that they find, that not only did they make him show his face, but then they find him for it. Like, I, I don't, we have a right to privacy, and we as people should 
hold on to our privacy as much as possible. Nobody has the right to know, you know, how you live your life with, unless you're, unless you're harming other people. And that's that's where I stand. I don't think that anybody should be invading my privacy unless I'm hurting somebody else. And that kind of leads to the four, the first section of the Fourteenth Amendment, because the Fourteenth Amendment is actually pretty freaking long. Um, and it, because it says all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges of, or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. There's that, that again. Nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So, unless you can come at me with a freaking due process, you know, go through a court case, I I have the right to my personal being. It's one of the things that I enjoy about living in this country. We, It's not the best country. It's not, the, you know, <clears throat> it's not the, per no, I shouldn't say it's not the best country. It's not the perfect, you know, government. It's not the perfect country that we all wish it would be. Um... But it's a lot better here than it is a lot of other places. And that you can you can take to the bank. I don't care. I will stand behind that for the rest of my life. That this place is a lot better than a lot of other places I've been to, I've seen, and I know of. And one of those that, one of those places right now is the UK apparently. Where they find a oh I don't know if any of y'all saw this. Um hold on, let me find this. So, you know, um, they, the police station is getting a lot of hell for this. Um, the MPS Regent Park, the Regent Park Police posted this tweet the other day, um, conducted a weapons sweep, dealt with a person injured from a van, reversing them, reported a burglary, and collected all of these from a charity shop who diligently did not want them to get in the wrong hands and disposed of correctly and safely. Safety. Um, let's see, there is, I think that's a letter opener in the shape of a, <laughs> yeah, I think that's in the shape of a rapier. Um, there's a fencing foil right here. There's a spoon, two sharpeners, knife sharpeners, if you've ever seen them. Um, they're used to sharpen the rest of these knives. All of these kitchen utensils. The only, there's only what, I think, let's see, is this a bigger picture than what they have here? Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. There's only two, two of these. Oh, and there's a spoon. Look at, the, look at this spoon right here. The rusty old spoon. Um, there's only two of these that I could say are actually, like, real weapons. And that's this machete-looking sword here. And then this little um, Japanese dagger. I forgot where they called um Oh, crap. I used to know the term. But all the rest of these are kitchen utensils. Like, I understand it. They're having a problem. Yeah, I would be more scared of the spoon. I've been, I've been threatened with, you know, being killed with a rusty spoon before. I think that, yeah, there's a butter knife right here. Yeah, a butter knife. It just... <laughs> I just... It makes me... I guess... I guess being an American, it makes me laugh. Um, because when you think of, you know, a weapons cache that's been picked up by the police, you think of the gentleman who, you know, was recently arrested by ATF. See if they have a picture of the weapons. Oh, here you go. 
so this guy this guy was arrested because he was selling these weapons illegally um it's not that he you know didn't own them legally but he was selling them Ill- illegally, and I'm pretty sure he got a lot of them illegally as well. Because I think there's a couple tetanus. I'm, I mean, I know tetanus is a real thing, Mimi. Thank you. I'd be afraid of that spoon more than any of these knives. I'm just saying. <laughs> or, or okay, I take that back. That fork right there. Yeah, that one's pretty rusty too. It's just. Uh, yeah, so when in America, this is what we think of when we think of a weapons cache rated. In the UK, this is what you think of. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, ducks, I'm not saying that you couldn't. Uh, like, with these parry knives, you could do some damage. And mind you, you're not going to hit a vital organ with a parry knife, but you can do a lot of damage with one. I'm not saying that you can't. I'm just saying that it's just... It, to me, it's... it's. How do you regulate this? How do you regulate, you know, kitchen knives? How? Do, are you going to have a station where people have to sign them up and... I know they do. Like, I... That's what's insane to me, is that they do. I guess it's just... I, I don't know. I guess it's just me, because I... I it would my kitchen would be empty and i would never be able to cook ever again i'd be very sad i mean plastic utensils for you know eating but at the same time how are you going to cut your meat jangles how are you going to cut that loaf of bread <laughs> i guess if you know the groceries are selling pre-cooked or pre-cooked and pre-cut you know i guess you can get away with it yeah, you don't. You, that, it's diff- I don't know. It's it's just... I guess it's just because it's I'm American and I'm... <sighs> Ducks, please. <laughs> I don't know. I, and, I like, I have... Yeah. Like that that would scare me as well, honestly. I, I to me this is overstepping by the government. But, you know, I don't live in the UK so I can't really complain too loud. But if it ever gets this way in the US, then you know we're gonna have a problem. We're gonna have a real big problem. You're just going to have people, like, you know, hiding a bunch of different weapons in their house. I wanted to look at some of these things. The Supreme Court rules a parked car in the driveway has Fourth Amendment protection. As it should. Uh, fine, I'll allow ads on. Sorry. I thought I already allowed ads for the Washington Times. Children screaming. Pre- Police must have a warrant to search a parked car or a car parked in a driveway. Like, I don't understand why. That wouldn't be such a thing. See, okay. But here's the thing. Because of the way that... Um, the way that our, our laws are. If a police officer walks by a vehicle, glances in, and sees something out in the open, then he can, you know, then he can call for a warrant. And that'd give him probable cause. Because you can see through most vehicles. Um, but to search it in over, you know, thoroughly, then they would need a, a warrant, obviously. I don't understand why this is even an issue. Wait, what? 
conviction in Virginia where a man committed traffic violations while riding an orange and black motorcycle he purchased without a title. Police officer tracked down the bike from Facebook photographs and discovered it belonged to Ryan Collins. Officer entered the driveway and lifted a uh, lifted a tarp covering the motorcycle to identify it, which after running the plates he discovered was stolen property. Law enforcement, the ability to search vehicles stands a warrant if they have probable cause. But in this way, it would both undervalue and the, for, the core Fourth Amendment protection afforded to home and, and its curtilage. The Fourth Amendment is neither an ass nor an idiot. It's the hallmark is reasonableness, reasonableness, and the court's strikingly unreasonable decision is based on misunderstanding. For wow, I can't believe that was even a thing. I don't know. I guess I guess it's just I would have argued the same thing. Oh, eminent domain. Eminent domain's another interesting thing. Mm -mm. I don't want to subscribe to your newsletter. I don't live in Richmond, Virginia. Property was taken against their wishes for a natural gas pipeline seeking relief from the Supreme Court. Almost the use of eminent domain by the mountain MVP is believed to be the first time the nation's highest court. Interesting. Thirteen landowners along the pipeline's route are appealing to dismissal of their lawsuit filed last year in Roanoke's federal court. Challenging the way Mountain Valley used a law that allows the condemnation of pre Wow. See, I'd, I have a problem with eminent domain, too. Because in, in this sense, in eminent domain issues, your property is not your property, you're just renting it. Kind of thing. You're renting it from the state, and that that's always bothered me as well. And I totally just closed that freaking... Uh, where... Ah, uh, no, that's that. Go back. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I guess that's... Oh, I'm sorry. I was just reading the title of this... This article because it says that immigrant children don't have the right to free lawyer, court says. Why are you telling me to stay on topic? I'm staying on topic, damn it. Oh, I know why you're saying it, because it just says that I know. I am. I am staying on topic because this is linked to the Sixth Amendment. <laughs> it is. Immigrant children are not entitled to attorneys paid for by the government when facing deportation. A federal co appeals court ruled Monday. So, because they are not American citizens, they're not allowed the Sixth Amendment, which is something I have a problem with. I do agree that the immigration system is overextended. This is, this is just interesting. This will... I wonder how this case ended. Well, whether immigrant children come to the U.S. without their parents or guardians are entitled to free attorneys. Ah, huh, that's interesting. That's just an interesting thing. I was just looking at the, the articles that are linked with the amendments on this website. So, all right, I'm going to take a really quick break and refill my water, guys. Um, I hope you all hang out, figure out 
something to talk about. If there's anything y'all want to talk about, you know, for this next segment, I'm down to talk about anything. I don't care. I will look up stuff to talk about, and I will be right back. Don't go anywhere.
book that I wrote, or all the words that we spoke, yet only with our eyes. Now is the time to choose, somebody wins and some lose, I can see through your disguise. Hey, down, hope for something better, looking at the clouds, the sun. All right, I'm back, guys. Thank you for hanging out. So I wanted to just do a little look over the Patriot Act because <clears throat> I have a problem with this. I've always had a problem with it. Um, and it was one of the things that made me a fan of Ron Paul uh, because he voted no for it. <clears throat> um. And one of the, a lot of the things that it, it came out with was the the indefinite detentions. I'm just I don't agree with the suspension of habeas corpus at all, um, because it, it puts people at risk of being detained and kept in jail for an extended amount of time or prison for an extended amount of time without being able to defend themselves from any accusation of links to um, terrorism, honestly. That's, that's what it was being used for. Um, yes, please, please treat each other with respect. Thanks, Cuddlebot. You're amazing. <laughs> um, but it also, <laughs> ducks, please. Um, it also, it also gave the NSA and the FBI the ability to tap our phones to, search emails to look through financial records and without ever getting a court order getting a warrant um and it's it's oh and here here this is so this is the original act right here of 2001 and then obama during his presidency on in 2011 made a uh, four year extension key or four year extension to roving wiretaps, searches of business records, and conducting surveillance of lone wolves. Um, and, oh, a minute to stop the NSA's mass phone, the phone did. That was after um, Snowden, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. Uh, see, and then in 2015, the expired parts were restored and renewed through 2019. Authorizes the measures to enhance the ability of domestic security ser services to prevent terrorism. Man, yeah, it's just... A lot of this was very... Just, it's just not right at all. And it should never have been enacted. DC, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Any other? Oh. And then, of course, you know, we all know Snowden. There was that big. There's a movie about him, right? Where he talked about how the NSA was using, what is it? Hold on. The NSA was, yes, frozen. No, I said Snowden. <laughs> Not frozen. Snowden. Um, he was a, you know, if y'all don't know who he was, he was a uh, private contractor for the NSA. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> uh, ducky. Sometimes, sometimes you make me cry. I just want you to know. Yes, please ban yourself. <laughs> um, but apparently, let's see, there was something in here that made me laugh. Um, it made me laugh, but it, it also was scary. But, like, the NSA, the CIA, GCH headquarters spied on users of Second Life. 
Xbox Live, and World of Warcraft. So guys, just want y'all to know if you were on um, Xbox Live during before uh, before Snowden came out, you probably talked to somebody that worked for the NSA. <laughs> Damn it! I thought my Xbox girlfriend was real. No, it was just an NSA member. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I was never on World of Warcraft or uh, Second Life, so I didn't have to worry about that. They even spied on their love interests. She, I know, I know she wasn't Ducky. Just like every other woman in my life, they're not real. That's why I'm turning to uh, the new robots. It's real enough, right? Oh, wait, what is it? Yeah, so... Here it is, right here. Leaked documents showed NSA agents also spied on their own love interests. Practice NSA employees termed <laughs> lovent. <laughs> I'm just... Like, how suspicious do you have to be to spy on your own, like, partners? Whisper, please. <laughs> It's a joke, gosh. Um, that's that's crazy. And then, like, they were also spying on... Which, okay, so if y'all don't understand how it works, the NSA is... The NSA is only allowed to do stuff inside continental U.S. United States. Well, yeah, of course, formal. Like, I know, I know, uh... Normal people have a tendency, and that's one of the things I think. Um, I think it's one of the things that you have to attack. Or I say attack um, to talk about if you're getting into a relationship is is the person's privacy. Oh no, I know we do. Um, I've, again, I've been guilty of this. I'm, I'm not saying I'm a saint because I'm not. I have looked through, um, a partner's cell phone in the past, um, because I had suspicions that she was having a relationship outside of our relationship. Um, but, I mean, even though I was right, um, it doesn't make it right what I did. Um, and because it's, it's... Like, I, me personally, I don't care. Like, if you really have this feeling to go through my phone, go through my phone. Um, I don't care. But, it just shows that you you lack trust in me. And obviously, the government doesn't trust any of us, so they're going to go through all of our stuff. Um, that's why the joke of the FBI agents watching you. I'm pretty sure the one watching me is named Bob. <laughs> <laughs> right? Shit. You know, freaking CIA, NSA, FBI have all looked through my phone stuff. Why, you know, whatever. Significant other, go ahead. Go through my phone. You won't find anything that the uh, the government already doesn't know about me. Okay, anyways, what I was saying was the NSA is supposed to conduct their their business inside of the United States and its territories, um, where the CIA is supposed to only work outside of the, um, the United States. I mean, obviously they have their offices here in the U S but m most of their operations are outside of the United States, whether they're in a, um, enemy country or a friendly country. They, they, everybody spies on everybody. The U.S. spies on the U.K. even though we're best of pals. They spy on Germany even though we're best of pals. Believe me, they I, they spy on Russia and China all the time. And the Chinese and the Russians and 
in the UK and everybody else is that we everybody spies on everybody. It's that's just how it goes, and it's just the same thing with the uh, with the whole um, interference in the the most recent election, which boggles my mind that nobody thought that that was not already happening. Like everybody felt like it was a brand new you know thing. Oh my goodness. Russia is, in, is is trying to mess with our our elections here. No crap. They've been doing it for decades. Probably they've been doing it for a long time. Over, probably over 100 years they've been messing with, you know, trying to mess with that stuff. Which just makes it easier now because technology makes it a lot easier. Um, the United States has been doing it for over a freaking 100 years. It's That's... The, what we do as a government I hate to say it we don't trust people to put people in power that we want in power so we try to help you know the people that we want to get in power it goes vice versa for every other country out there I'm well okay I wouldn't say every country out there because there's some countries like Somalia that I don't think can you know afford to have people you know operations going all over the world um It's just it was interesting to see all of the stuff that a lot of people knew were going on. Um, I, I, a lot of people knew this stuff was going on with what that Snowden let out. Um, they didn't know the scope of it. They didn't know everything that was included in it. Um, I I don't know. Me, personally, I don't know anybody who was surprised by the information that Snowden released. I mean, now, then we had proof that it was happening, but I don't think anybody I know was um, actually completely surprised. What is this? Uh, this was the, uh, the funding for it. Okay. Just looking at that image. I don't, like, I'm not a big fan of Wikipedia just because you can change anything in it but I just as a basis for something to talk about I like it because it, it gives you kind of like little points he finally came back to the states right I don't even remember Oh no, he's still um he's still in Russia, never mind. Yeah, so I will say we do need to get rid of the Patriot Act. And if you are a voting person like myself, um and you talk you, you do send letters to your representatives and stuff like that. I do from time to time when there's something I really care about that needs to be taken care of. Interesting. I just, I'm not a big fan of, not a big fan of this. What does this say? <laughs> oh, crap. There goes my freaking, uh. Okay, that's back. The FBI has not been here. Watch very closely for removal of this. Sorry, that's funny to me. No, it's just gross. All right, guys, I'm gonna call it there. Thank you for hanging out tonight. Um, I don't know what we're gonna talk about next week. I will be back tomorrow. I might be a little bit late tomorrow. We're gonna be playing Steambird Alliance. Um, if you want to. If you want to join, I have a couple more keys. Um, well, let me pull it up for a second. Where is it at? Steambird Alliance. Um, let's see. Here's the trailer for it. I have a couple keys. We're going to be playing it tomorrow night. I think the latest I'll be on tomorrow is going to be... So this is a... 
multiplayer game. Um, I think we're going to start at like 9 o'clock tomorrow night. At the latest. I'm pretty sure it's PvE and not PvP. If I'm not mistaken. It's just an interesting game I got a bunch of codes for and I wanted to play um, on stream. They, the, the beta ends this weekend so I really needed to get it out. I couldn't do it the past two weekends because I've been out of town. Um, so if, if you would like to come and join us tomorrow night, let me know. I'll, I'll get you a key. Um, and I will be back tomorrow night, hopefully around hopefully around uh, no later than 9 o'clock tomorrow night because um, I'm going to a crawfish bowl and I cannot wait. Um, but thanks guys for hanging out with me tonight. I know it's a little bit shorter than usual. It's just a lot more condensed than usual, apparently. Um, and like I said, I don't know what next week we're going to talk about on Pirate TV. We'll see. There's a couple um, things I kind of wanted to touch base on. And um, I will see you guys next week. Have a good night. Or I'll see you guys tomorrow.